The first method that we will use to solve for the response of general force in condition for vibration system is the Fourier series. This method will be used mainly for forces that are periodic but not harmonic. My name is Carmen Müller Karger. Some of the figures and content from this presentation are adapted from our textbook, The Mechanical Vibration from RAD. And this content corresponds to chapter number four. The learning objective of this presentation is to find the responses of single degree of freedom system subjected to general periodic forces using the Fourier series. The governing equation of this mass spring damper system when we measure x from the equilibrium position is this one right here. If we have composite external forces, let's say that the total force is equal to a harmonic force of frequency omega 1 and another force of frequency omega 2 and another force of frequency omega 3, we can write this expression as a summation of three different forces where j varies from 1 to 3. We recall that the solution or response to harmonic force will be the amplitude of the force divided by the constant of the spring of the system times the magnification factor cosine the same frequency of the force in frequency times t, which is time, and minus a phase angle. The phase angle can, calculate, can be calculated with this expression right here and the magnification factor with this expression right here where r is the frequency ratio and zeta is the damping ratio. Now, if we have three forces and if the system is linear for small displacement, the steady state solution becomes the summation of all individual responses to each of the forces. Therefore, I can write the response of the system as the response of the first force, that will be this one right here, the response to the second force, this will be this one right here, and the response to the third force, which will be this one right here. Each of these responses have a different magnification factor because the frequency ratio varies because the frequency of each of these forces is different. The natural frequency is the same because it's a property of the system and so is zeta, the damping ratio, but R varies with the force. Therefore, if we have this as our solution, we can see it as three different solutions that we add together and we get this response over here. This response will be a function of the three amplitudes and the three frequencies of excitation. We can see this response in the time domain as we just plugged it in here, graphed it in here, but we can also see the response in the uh, frequency domain. And in this graph over here, what we will see is that for frequency one, we will have an amplitude, which will be this one right here. For frequency two, we will have this amplitude over here. And for frequency three, we will have this amplitude right here. Now let's go to the definition of Fourier series. So we can say that any periodic function of time can be represented as a Fourier series in an infinite sum of sine and cosine terms. So if we have this force over here, which is a periodic function but not harmonic, we like to convert it to a harmonic force because as we saw in the previous slide, we know the response to harmonic forces. Therefore, this will be the expression where we can get these coefficients using these definitions right here, and we will do some, some examples. Very important to notice that even though we can increase the number of terms and the, the more terms that we have, you see here, if we have one term solution, two term solution, three term solution, and even many more terms, it doesn't matter how many terms, it's very difficult to 
approximate the discontinuities here. And even if we increase the number of terms, we can even also increase the error in those discontinuities. That's what is called the Gibbs phenomenon. In this form, we will convert a periodic function in a summation of terms in terms of cosines and sine with an independent term. And to calculate these coefficients, we will use this original function in put here in our integral, and that will give us the coefficients. Now that we have the function in terms of harmonic functions, the response of the system will follow the principle of superposition. And this is because the system is linear and we are uh, working with small displacements. So the equation of motion will be this one right here. And if we take the first force, this is a constant force. Therefore, the response will be just a displacement will be the magnitude of this constant force divided by the constant of the spring. For the second term, this is a harmonic force, and I will use exactly the same function, cosine and cosine, and will be the magnitude of the force, which is a sub j, divided by the constant of the spring times the magnification factor, and this cosine function will be delayed a phase angle. And for the third term, this will be the response, similar to the previous one. In all cases, the magnification factor has this form, and the phase angle has this form. In conclusion, using the principle of superposition, if we were able to convert our periodic function in a series of sine and cosine, our response using the method of superposition will be a sum of the responses of these harmonic forces. In order to calculate this coefficient, it's good to use the definition of odd functions and even functions. Remember that an even function is that one that the function evaluated at negative time will be equal to the function evaluated in the same time but positive, right? So those are functions that are mirror respect to the y-axis. These functions will become a series in terms of only cosine functions. These examples of this type of functions you see here, which mirror respect to the y-axis. Why are they only considered to be a cosine terms because all the b sub j terms will become zero. In the case of an odd function, which complies with this expression right here, I will be able to find a Fourier series that is only in terms of sine. All the a sub j terms will become equal to zero. For example, here we have a function that is an odd function and is described by this piecewise function over here where we have a negative amplitude for half of the period and a positive amplitude for the rest of the period. So this is one period from here zero to when the function start and over. As you see, my frequency will be 2 pi divided by the period. So let's find for these functions, the coefficients to find the Fourier series. We will have, this is the definition that we will use for a sub zero. If we substitute the negative amplitude for half a period and the positive amplitude for the other half period, those are very easy integrals because they are just constant. Therefore, the integral is t. I take the amplitude outside my bracket and when I evaluate that, I see that the coefficient for a sub zero is equals to zero. If I do now the coefficient for a sub j, I will have, this is the definition of the coefficient, and I will have to divide this integral in terms of my piece y function, which is from zero to tau half and from tau half to tau. This is the two integrals. 
for the first integral, the function has a negative amplitude of a, and for the second half of the period, they have a positive a. If I integrate, that give me this is a constant, so that give me a, the cosine give me a sine here, and this one give me also a sine. When I evaluate those expressions in my limits of integration, I get this one right here, right? But sine of everything that is in in pi doesn't matter how much uh, the value of j is is equals to zero. This is also zero. This is also zero, and this is also zero. Therefore. All the coefficients for a sub j are equals to zero. Let's do now the values for b sub j. We do the same, and the b sub j expression will be the function, which is a piecewise function again, but times sine. If we integrate this expression right here, we get this integral right here. And we notice that for all the values of j that are even, this term becomes zero. And for all the values that are odd, we do get a value that is this one right here. Because this becomes negative 1, this becomes negative 1, and this also becomes negative 1, and it gives me a negative 4. And see that if we substitute the frequency, which is 2 pi over tau, tau will cancel out, this 2 will cancel out as well, as well, and we get pi. So this is the expression for B sub j. So finally, this expression that was a piecewise function, we were able to convert it in a summation of sine functions. And if we see that graphically, we had this piece by function, and we were able to convert it in a harmonic force. However, this is only one term, and as you see, it's not very well approximated. So if we add a second term, it's better approximated. If we add a third term, you see how it becomes a better approximation. However, the discontinuities will always have an error. And if we keep increasing the number of terms, eventually we will be able to approximate the function pretty well, but in the discontinuities. Oh, and here you see all the possible solutions with one term, two terms, three terms, or several terms. So finally, when we have an odd function, we have that if this is the force that we were able to approximate, this force piecewise, we were able to approximate it in a sum of sine forces. Therefore, this will be the response if we have only one term. If we have two terms, I will have two solutions that will add together. And if I have several terms, a summation of terms, I will have a summation of responses. And these are the expressions for the magnification factor and the phase angle. Please make sure that you have to include the r corresponding to this j value in both cases. If we do the analysis for an even function, in this case it's a very similar function that we just analyzed, but as you see the the origin is shifted. So now we have uh, between zero and one quarter of the cycle, is a, we have a positive amplitude. Then for half the cycle, we have a negative amplitude. And then we have a positive amplitude again for the last quarter of the cycle. We calculate our coefficient a sub zero. And we have to divide our integral in three parts but those integrals are still very easy because they are just constants. When we integrate and evaluate in our limits of integrations, we notice that the a sub zero a coefficient is equal to zero. We do the same for the a sub j. Now we have to include this function times cosine of j so omega t, and we ha again have to divide the integral in three parts because we have a piecewise function but are very easy because are just constant. We integrate those values and then we evaluate 
those values in our limit of integration. And we get several cases. So every time that we have a j equals to an even number, that coefficient is equals to zero. For one, five, nine, and so forth are positive, and for three, seven, eleven are negative values. And for the b sub j values, we introduce our piece function here and multiply by sine of j omega t, and we get for all values of j, the coefficient is equals to zero. Then if we include these coefficients in our Fourier expansion, this is the expression that we get for our initial function. And the same as we did before, we will get the response of the system if this is the function that is uh, the excitation of our vibrating system. In this case, again, we get the amplitude divided by the constant of the spring times the magnification factor for each of these frequencies and cosine the same frequency minus a phase angle. And if we write the expressions for the magnification factor in terms of those frequencies, then we get this expression and the phase angle, we get this expression. So comparing the even functions with the odd functions, we said that an even function can be expressed in terms of only cosine functions and an odd function can be expressed only in terms of sine functions. In this case, we have to calculate only the coefficient at a sub j with this expression, and this is how the Fourier expansion uh, becomes. And this is the response. In the case of an odd function, this is the Fourier expansion, and therefore this is the response. And with this, we conclude the presentation of Fourier series. And please look also to the example that is posted for this topic.